All right. Shalom, shalom. Welcome back to the Code Searcher. Got another table for you, you guys. Another code I've worked on here, but also got a couple of clips I want you to see. One of them I've been holding on to for a while. I, I, I shared it with my class and uh, it didn't it, it didn't make it into the to one of the videos that I uh, did for you. Uh, but it's really important information. And it's from Tulsi Gabbard. Now, she says some really um, hardcore things right off the bat in this video. She names names. But, um, you know, she's setting up a, a, a point for me here. You know, I got to I got to be uh, careful of the things that I say on YouTube. And uh, sometimes I like to let other people say, um, you know, well, what I've been telling you in a roundabout way for a very long time. All right. So two little short clips, and then we're going to get right into a new code that I got for you. First one up is Tulsi Gabbard. You guys, one of my favorite people. I actually thought that she should have been Trump's pick. Now, this comes on one, uh, well, you know, one of the podcasts I like, which is Chris Williamson. Um, and uh, he, he does great work. Um, and I like the, his, his interviewing styles. Anyway, in this particular video, we're only going to watch just a little bit of it. It's not, uh, it's a two hour video, but we're going to just watch a little bit of it and then move on to another interview by the same guy with Eric Weinstein, um, who says some, something very interesting in right in the beginning of his interview as well. So let's go to Tulsi Gabbard. Listen to what the question is, first of all, and how she responds actually runs the government in your experience <laughs> not who you think it is <laughs> it's um and in, in and in many cases especially recently uh the, the troubling part about all this is it's not even people who we vote for when you look at uh what happened when president biden had that infamous debate with president trump uh it, it exposed the reality that many of us have known for a long time which is that President Biden has not been the guy calling the shots. He has not been the guy making the decisions, nor has it been Kamala Harris for that matter, nor will it be if she is elected president. It is this cabal of, you know, the Democrat elite, the the woke warmongers uh, made up of the likes of Hillary Clinton and uh, Barack Obama and, you know, Tony Blinken and Jake Sullivan and, you know, people who are in the military industrial complex people who profit from us being in a constant state of war it is uh, those in the administrative state in the national security state who derive more authorities and ability to take away uh, our liberty when we are in a heightened state of crisis or war it is the the their friends and billionaires and people in media who all derive their power from being able to have a figurehead that essentially they can control and the most troubling part about, there's so many things wrong with this, of course, but really at, at the most fundamental level, you look at, um, you know, our country is the oldest democracy in the world, but the reality of a truly functioning and thriving democracy that has brought to life the vision that our founders had for us, that we really have a government of, by, and for the people, and that we have the ability and responsibility for that matter to ensure that um, the government we have only exists with the consent of the governed, that becomes very hard to do to hold people accountable when the person that you voted for is, is certainly not the one making the decisions. How long is that? So <laughs> she puts it like it is, you guys. She puts it like it is. Who's who's really running things? And, and um, you know, what, what was I telling you for several years now, especially with Kamala being the one they wanted to push forward, that it, even with Biden being in there, um, he really wasn't running it in the first place he, he's just a puppet remember the puppet in his table right that's what it is and so we have this thing going on that donald trump kind of interrupted and brett uh excuse me eric it's two brothers <laughs> brett and eric eric is going to you know talk about the, that that particular point right that um trump was this anomaly that happened that wasn't supposed to happen Right. And uh, it, it, it kind of threw things out of whack. Um, and it wasn't expected. But after he, after he was out of office, then they prepared for the next time. Right. And so um, 
we, we, we saw it happen. Well, it, nothing's changed, right? If, if anything, they've, they've perfected everything. And, and Brett's going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, but, uh, oh, and by the way, here's the thing. Yah's not going to be caught off guard about this. He's very aware of what goes on back, back doors. And I really think that he's using Donald Trump in many ways. He has already done so. He, he, he in his first term or his, his term, he accomplished a lot uh, concerning Israel, right? And I, I think that is one of the most, uh, you know, primary points that he was supposed to do, but also the Roe v. Wade thing, which puts it back into the hands of the states, right? So now it's in the hands of the people, right, um, to finish the work, so to speak. Um, will that get done? I don't know. Um, that's the only way that y'all's going to turn this thing around, by the way, is if, if something drastic happened. I was just on the phone with my mom today, you know, talking about codes and talking about the election. And she was asking me, is there, you know, is there a chance that, that y'all could change his mind? Absolutely, there's a chance. I think it's a small chance, but there is a chance. And uh, it, and, and I told her it, it depends on the people, really. Uh, but and here's the thing. If Donald Trump would would to be come back, it doesn't mean that that judgment is is over. Judgment goes away. It's only stayed for. It's like you know getting a stay of execution by the governor. The death penalty is still there. You just got some more time, right? So that's how we should view this thing. And by the way, if he does come back, he's only got four years. He doesn't get another you know two terms. He only gets four more years. What is he going to get accomplished in? Right. Because he's got he's got this machine that is working against him, and it is working against him now. And Yah is allowing it to happen because he has a purpose in it. And I have an idea of what he's doing, and we'll we'll talk about that at, a, at another time. Um, it goes to the prophets and and what they say will happen in the end times. When we will begin to call upon his name and when we're in, in distress, it goes to that. But the other part is the government and the prophets and the and the church, right? The religious organizations of the United States. And oh, by the way, did you know, here's a real statistic. The top 100 uh, Christian denominations was given a survey and they were asked simply, is there more than one way to God? And guess what? 66% said yes. I'll just let you chew on that for a little bit, right? So this country is not, let's be really clear, a righteous Christian nation as one would hope to, it to be. So let's just be really clear on that. We've got a problem, right? So all this stuff is happening, and he's allowing it to happen, just like he allowed it to happen to Israel in ancient times. We can see this with the story of, of uh, Hosea, which appears in the in the code table that I'm going to show you. Um, but let's continue with the video before I start ranting uh, about you know why America's going through what it's going through. That being the case, was it ever the case that the president ran the country? When was the inflection point? I don't. I don't know that there's one specific. I mean, there has been you know, personalities come in and shift here and there. Uh, I would say the answer to that has probably changed. But in the election that we are facing here very shortly in the United States, um, it's our opportunity to hit the reset button. And you know, however people feel about the choices and the options that we have, and they've changed a little bit recently. But really, it's only the phases that have changed. The stakes have not changed. And and the choices between now we'll say this about Tulsi. Uh, Tulsi, she is more optimistic than than uh, Eric is about elections. Um, even though she's admitted that those that are running this this the show behind the scenes do exist, and she named off the names. And by the way, we've discussed those names in the codes and have for many years. We've known this. She is just confirming this. Okay, uh, but I think she still holds out hope that. Uh, you know, things could be turned around. And, um, you know, I just don't think that Donald Trump alone can do that. You guys, it's going to take uh, it's going to take a, a, a lot for it. He, there's so many people in the government. Listen, his own vice president turned his back on him when he needed them the most. Right. It's because he's part of the, the freaking system.
Okay, they all are. It's a good old boy system, and and scratch my back, I'll shave yours, right? That kind of stuff. The Democrats and the Republicans are in bed with it. Eric puts it a better way. Let's let's move on to Eric before I uh, you know get off on a, a rant again. And here's what Eric said to to the same um, podcaster Chris Williamson uh, <clears throat> just two days ago, I think it was. At the start of the year, I said it was way too close to November to switch anybody out. Turns out I was wrong. Beginner's luck. You said, what are the odds that Joe Biden has a debilitating event between now and November, including death, so he runs a 1 in 20 chance of dying in any given year or above, that I don't think you know whether he's even going to make it to November. Debilitating event could have been a de debilitating public event. I purposely left it vague, and I didn't say the other part of it, which I now feel comfortable saying, which is, I don't, I don't know whether... I don't know whether Donald Trump will be allowed to become president. What? He just said he doesn't know if Donald Trump is going to even be allowed to become president. I've been telling you this. Right. Um, we're we're under this um, illusion that our votes count and maybe they do to some point, you guys. But then there comes a, a place, a, a line that's crossed where manipulation has happened. Right. And and this is this goes way back. They did it in, 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 when JFK was elected. That's how he got in. The mob had a deal with his father to get him in. This is why Chicago played a big role. It, Chicago played a big role. Illinois played a big role in the election of JFK. It's because the election was thrown. It was rigged, right? Listen to what my man says. What do you mean by that? I think that there's a remarkable story and we're in a, a funny game, which is, are we allowed to say what that story is? Because to say it, to analyze it, to name it is to bring it uh, into view. I think we don't understand why the censorship is behaving the way it is. We don't understand why it's in the shadows. We don't understand why our news is acting in a bizarre fashion. So let's just set the stage, given that that was in February. Um, there is something that I think Mike Benz has just referred to as the rules-based international order. It's an interlocking series of agreements, tacit understandings, explicit understandings, clandestine understandings about how the most important structures keep the world free of war and keep markets open. And there has been a system in place, whether understood explicitly or um, behind the scenes or implicitly, that says that the purpose of the two American parties is to prune the field of populist candidates so that whatever two candidates uh, exist in a face-off are both acceptable to that world order. So what you're trying to do from the point of view, let's take it from the point of view of, let's say, the State Department, the intelligence community, the Defense Department, and um, major corporations that are, have to do with uh, international issues from arms trade to, oh, I don't know, food. They have a series of agreements that are fragile and could be overturned if a president entered the Oval Office who didn't agree with them and the mood of the country was, why do we pay taxes into these structures? Why are we hamstrung? Why aren't we a free people? So what the two parties would do is that they would run primaries. You'd have populist candidates and you'd pre-commit the populist candidates to support the candidates who won the primaries. As long as that took place and you had two candidates that were both acceptable to the international order, that is that they aren't going to rethink NAFTA or NATO or what have you, we called that democracy. And so democracy was the illusion of choice, what's called magician's choice, where the choice is not actually, you know, pick a card, any card, but somehow the magician makes sure that the card that you pick is the one that he knows. Uh, in that situation, you have magician's choice in the primaries, and then you'd have the duopoly field, two candidates. I like the way he just put that. It's either of which was acceptable, and you could actually afford to hold an election. And the populace would vote, and that way the international order wasn't put at risk every four years because you can't have alliances that are subject to the whim of um, the people in plebiscites. So under that structure, everything was going fine until 2016. And then the first candidate ever to not hold um, any position in the military nor position in government uh, in the history of the Republic under the Oval Office, Donald Trump, broke through the primary structure. So then there was a full court press. OK, we only have one candidate that's acceptable to the international order. Donald Trump will be under um, constant pressure that he's a loser, he's a wild man, he's an idiot. 
and and he's under the control of the Russians, and then he was going to be a, you know a, a twenty to one underdog, and then he wins. And there was no precedent for this. They learned their lesson. You cannot afford to have candidates who are not acceptable to the international order and continue to have these alliances. This is an unsolved problem. So I don't have a particular dog in this fight. I, one, believe in democracy. I also believe in international agreements. And it is the job of the State Department, the intelligence community, and the Defense Department to bring this problem in front of the American people and say, we have a problem. You don't know everything that's going on. And if you start voting in populist candidates, you're going to end up knocking out load-bearing walls that you don't understand. But Trump was in office for four years. Did he turn the entire table upside down? He risked doing that. Say more. You remember that there was this uh, uncomfortable uh, accommodation given to the Central Intelligence Agency at the beginning of his actual term. There was a question about, um, was he going to question the... I have a very different point of view than most of my friends uh, who are also, you know, at least nominally Democrats, which is, it was a very immoral thing that was done to him. He was asked the question, will you pre-commit that you will accept the results of an election? Now, if you were going to rig an election, you would ask somebody that to begin with, and that's part of the game. And he says, well, you know, we'll see. So... You have this very strange thing going on where democracy is the greatest threat to democracy. Now, how can that be? It's two different concepts of democracy. One concept of democracy is the will of the people. You hold plebiscites. And even if you do it with an electoral college or political parties, the idea is that the people are allowed, you know, by and of and for the people. The other idea of democracy is that democracy is about institutions that sprang from democracy once upon a time and that those institutions have to be kept strong. Those are two completely different concepts that are overloaded to the same word. Under that circumstance, we have a, a paradox, which is how do we keep the electorate from overturning the, you know, the, the type A democracy from overturning the type B democracy? And that's the unsolved problem that they will not bring in front of the people. So what you have is a situation which I believe that there are many people in Washington, D.C. who think that Donald Trump cannot become president because he can now go for broke. He's also not going to try to run for re-election. Mm. He's relatively unconstrained. He's wealthy. He's uh, he's learned how to play a lot of these games. And maybe got a little bit of an axe to grind as well after the last six years. No kidding. And he's a wild card. You know, th there are three people who are doing amazing versions of the drunken boxing game. Kanye, who's probably uh, the first one to really fail, Elon and Donald Trump. And all three of them tried to do something where you couldn't pin them down. You couldn't figure out like what they were going to do next. And that's what the order is keep, keeps trying to do. Like, will you commit to this? Will you say this? Will, will you mouth these words? And none of these people would play the game. Uh, I, I find this all... You, you ever see Emmanuel Augustus, or this boxer who actually, you know, I think uh, Floyd uh, Mayweather said was his, his toughest opponent because he just, he wouldn't fight in a style that anyone could recognize. Mm. Probably Un the most unpredictable. Yeah, and the most entertaining boxer I've ever seen in my life. I mean, just check out any highlight reel and you won't even believe this is real. It, it, it doesn't seem possible. So that's what Donald Trump is. He's a guy who's got formulas that confuse people like Sam Harris. You know, Sam and I have been debating this for years. I think that Trump is an incredibly intelligent man, and that there's incredible method in his tweets uh, of old. You can just, you can put them into a data set and you say that there are five or six different types of tweets and that the left falls for every one of them every time. So in this... So very interesting uh, interview. Um, you know, the latter part of it, he starts getting into a lot of science stuff because he is a physicist, um, very smart man. Um in a very long interview too it's like three and a half hours but the first part was what grabbed my attention because of the things that he said there uh very interesting so what we have here is woman president woman president ever been one not in this country at least um and uh, it is encoded 15 times but this particular one as you can see is uh, very small skip of uh, 11, 11. Now, this is, in, <clears throat> this is located in the profits, in particular, for the most part. If you look over here in the right margin, this is Ezekiel. And we're at a very small skip, too, of 11, 11. So small intervals, another one of those. Bulk of it is... Um, all the way to this point right here is Ezekiel. And then we go into Hosea. And uh, and then by the time we get down here, we're in Joel. And then uh, the minor prophets down at the bottom. So very small skip. Some of the terms that are here uh, is like America going across the top there. 
Uh, then we have the name Kamala right next to woman president. We also have the spirit of Lilith here um, because what I see with this and in, in some of the research that I've been doing is this feminist spirit, this spirit of Lilith and Jezebel. By the way, Jezebel appears down here um, in the left side. Jezebel in here. Again, small skip. And, and again, Lilith. Now look at this. A woman president at a skip of 11, 11. And then in the same matrix, we've got Lilith at the same skip. That's significant. That is, that is <clears throat> tremendous. United States in the blue that goes across right there. Um, the date is here as well in Tav Shinpei Vav, which is. Um, 2025 when the inauguration is and uh we we also have listen i said this with one of her tables talking about kamala this particular word right here which is president is there twice right under the access term and i made the comment that i saw the same thing with the obama tables right where it appeared that there would be two terms okay and then with the trump table it's only there one time one term. So that that's the pattern I've been seeing with this word. So woman president, and then we have the word president twice here right next to that. So um, and then again in the latter days, in the days that we're in, um, you know, all this information encoded with in Ezekiel and and essentially Hosea. So um I wouldn't look at this. We've got the day of Yah. Uh, or the day of the Lord in English, uh, in your English translation, the, day, the great and terrible day right there. But this is an abacus effect. It's not here normally because um, we're actually leaving off. See, this This is all one one word here. Meal. Meal. And and then you got Yahuwah's name right next to it, but with the with the Yod Bav Mim right next to Yah's name, you've got Yom Yahuwah, which is the day of the Lord or the great and terrible day. Um, in other words, it's an abacus effect. It's not there um, in the the text normally, as you'll see here. We'll go right to it, and we're starting down at the bottom. Um, I actually haven't gone through all of the verses that go through here because I just uh, really got to start working on this one. This is one of the, you know, when I start finding these access terms, sometimes I just store them away <clears throat> because, you know, you could be driving down the road or in the shower or somewhere and you get this idea, right? And you want to write that down. This this for code searcher students, you write down those ideas because if you don't, you'll forget about it. Well, what happens is you start accumulating these access terms, and then, um, you know, if you got time, you sit down, you start running access terms, and then you start filing them away because you don't immediately start working on it. I need some water. Anyway, you file it away, and then you come back to it. That's one of these tables right here. So I've got several of those, and in, in, in concerning, you know, things that we're seeing so i've only been in this for a few days particularly looking at this particular table here <clears throat> but i thought it was you know another important one particularly because of the size and where it is and um you know the what it implies and uh so i wanted to get it out to you guys because well you guys have been good to me and I appreciate you. And I appreciate the emails and, uh, you know, you guys reaching out to me, um, asking me to not give up and things like that. And, uh, you know, it's it's been encouraging. And I appreciate you. And I appreciate the help that I've gotten. You know, I'm able to get my car worked on and get fixed. All right. So here we are. This is the last part of Ezekiel. Chapter 48, verse 35. And you can see there, the day of, of Yah is not here, but we see um, of the city from that, that day shall be, and the yod heh is there, right? So Yom Yahu is not there, 
but the letters are. And so that's why, you know, the proximity of this, great and terrible day, the things um, that we are potentially about to see. Let's go here now to Hosea and see what's going on with Hosea. And the story there, very interesting story, you guys. This is um, actually when Yah. So uh, through the prophet Hosea, Yah did a really weird thing. He he had this prophet go marry a prostitute because he wanted to prove a point. All right, now talk about going out of your way uh, and going to extremes to make a point, but this prophet was literally asked to go and marry this this harlot, this prostitute, because it was to be an example of Israel or the church in latter days, or you know what will happen, the whoredom, the you know the walking away. The, the this is why Yahuwah had to send his son to redeem. Right, he's the kinsman redeemer. That's the whole story of. Gomer and Hosea. Hosea is the kinsman uh, redeemer. He comes and redeems her. It's a beautiful story, but it's very tragic. And yet, here it is. And uh, this is and what it says here. Let's start with uh, chapter 2, verse 1. Yet the number of their children shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where I was said to them, ye are not my people, there shall be said, to, unto them, ye are the sons of the living, uh, living God, right? I want to get here. So it's the story of, of whoredom, and then there's illegitimate children, um, and legitimate children, um, that happens. Y'all gives them names. The names have meaning, like, uh, you know what? We should have went up one more to chapter one to see what what's what he says here and and how it uh how it applies. And then a word came unto Hosea from Yah. The son of Be uh, Beeri, in the days of Uzziah, and Jotham, Ahaz, and yada, yada, yada. So in the beginning of the word of Yah by Hosea, and Yah said unto Hosea, Go, take thee a wife of whoredoms, and the children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from Yah. Okay, so this is how it applies to America. Whoredom, right? When we, when we see the woman riding the beast, who is represented by a woman holding a cup, a Jezebel type of woman. She's riding a beast. She's dressed in the garments of the Catholic Church, right? She represents the, the harlot, but then there's daughters of the harlot, right? Which would be the Protestant churches. Everybody follow. This is why he says, come out of her, my people, and participate not in her sins. These organizations are going to be punished, and they're being punished right now. You guys, they're being threshed. Every single one of them. And then the prophets that have come out of the major ones are also being threshed and being exposed. Okay? But it's because of the whoredom. Not literal whoredom, but th though that may happen in a lot of cases, but spiritual whoredom. That's why we're given the story of Hosea and Gomer. Okay? Is every follow that? The children of whoredoms. And so she went and took, and so he went and took Gomer, the daughter of, of Diblam, which conceived and bare him a son. And Yah said unto him, call his name Jezreel, for let yet a little while I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu and cause, the, and cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. So Israel was being divorced and put away. And it shall come to pass in that in that day that I would break the bow, the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a, da uh, bear a daughter. And, and Yah said unto him, Call her name Lo Ruhamah. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel. You see, 
but I will utterly take away them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. All right, so there's two houses that we're dealing with. Who's the house of Israel? House of Israel is still in despair. That is where well, I call Christians and Hebrews th that are in America and other nations as well, you guys. England, Australia. It's, Israel is everywhere. That's why the angels are sent to the four corners of the earth to gather Israel, right? Or the church, whatever you want to call it, whatever feels better to you. <laughs> but you are called Israel. She is still in diaspora, right? Because she's, she did all of this in ancient times. But the parallel here is that we see history repeating itself again in the latter days. And what does he say in Jeremiah 30? He's going to save her out of it, right? This is the latter rain. This is when we start seeing, listen, it gets really bad, really bad. And y'all will pour out his spirit so that we can make it through that. Do you understand that? It gets dark before it gets light, really dark. And so he's going to allow this to happen, you guys. And it's going to cause a great division in this nation. There's going to be some very, very angry people. And there may even be civil war. And then there may even be, you know, a world war that, that we get caught up in as well. That's, that's certainly down the road. I don't know how far, but I do feel it coming. So, a great divide coming. It's a great threshing, you guys, and it's uh, it's it's this is why I've been drawn to Jonathan Kahn here recently because his his books are are pointing the very same thing out that I'm seeing, of all places, right in the text. I'm also seeing it play it out in my, in front of me, but in the text, the same kinds of things. You know, there's words I can't say on here in the, the alphabet soup organizations. They don't mean the CIA, FBI. I'm talking about the other ones with the, with the blue hair and the rainbow stuff and all those guys, right? The 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 T's and the G's and the B's. And the L's and all those, right? So that kind of stuff was going on too in these times, right? So we got to deal with it. Let's go down the next line. I think this this is also Hosea here, but it, it specifically mentions the end times, and this is by chapter three. which is a very short chapter, by the way. It's only five verses. And then said, Yon to me, go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love that Yah has toward the children of Israel, who took other gods and loved flagons of wine. So I bought her for 15 pieces of silver. See, she's being redeemed there, right? And for an omer of barley and a half omer of barley. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide many days, and thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man. So I will be for thee. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, without a prince, and without a sacrifice, without an image, without an ephod, or without a teraphim. And afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek Yah their Elohim. And David, their king, and shall fear Yah and his goodness in the latter days. That's now. Look at this. Look at this. He could be speaking this right now to the United States. Hear the word of Yah, ye children of America. For your ha uh, Yah hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no truth and no mercy and no knowledge of Yah in the land by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land mourn 
and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive, nor reprove one another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. And therefore thou shalt fall in, in the day, and the prophet shall also fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. And my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, and thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgot the law of thy Elohim, I will also forget thy children. And as they were increased, so they sinned against me, and therefore I will change their glory to shame. And they eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart with iniquity, and there shall be and they and there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them. For their doings. For they shall eat. And not have enough. They shall commit whoredom. And shall not increase. Because I have left off. To take heed. Uh, unto Yahu, uh, Yahuwah. Whoredom and wine. And new wine. Take away the heart. And I'm already reading in chapter 4. But it goes on and on. And, you know. Only on a skip of, of 11.11. So we could just literally. Read the story. <clears throat> of of Gomer and Hosea, but essentially Israel and Judah as well, the, the two daughters. Because that's what we're, we're being compared to. So if you if you want to, you know, know more about how that goes, go and study those books and look at that. But also see the mercy that Yah has when repentance comes. He is a merciful, he, he is a merciful Elohim. He is not vengeful. L listen to me. You know, I I may fail at, at at you know not bringing you enough hope, but but being all doom and gloom and getting you know people worried, things like that. I get it. Um, so I'm, I'm this is you know this is not without hope. There is hope. And that comes when his people start calling upon him, and this is why he allows threshing, you guys, to break us down, to bring us to him. It's a process that we go through. He allows hard times. Hard times will separate, right? You will either be a bitter person or a humble person when hard times come. One of those two things, bitter or humble. So there's a separation of wheat and chaff and wheat and tares, all that kind of stuff. During the threshing, during the process that we go through, the harvest, the process. But it's for our own good. And he's not to destroy us. But he tells us right here in his prophet, in, in his prophet here, Hosea, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Right? So we have to take heed to his word. He is the same. He is the same Elohim, the same God, as 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 the times of these prophets. So by the time we get right here, this is Joel. Now I want to read this because um, this is significant too. This is a last days prophecy, Joel chapter two. Let's just go to verse one and start there. Blow ye a trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of Yah. Right? This is where <laughs> the day of Yah. Right here. Yom Yahuwah. It's a great and terrible day. For it is night hand. A darkness, a day of darkness, a gloomness, a day of clouds, a thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a, a, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever like, neither shall there be any more, even after it, even years after many generations. A fire devour before them, and behind them a huge flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, 
and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is the appearance of horses, and like and as a horseman they shall run, like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains they shall leap, and the noise of the flame of the fire that devour the stubble as a strong people set in a battle array. Before their faces the people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness with all the fire, right, going on. This is probably an attack because of the battle array, right? And fire is devouring everything. And they shall run like mighty men and shall cl climb the wall of, uh, like men of war. And they shall march everyone in his ways, and they shall not break. They shall not break ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path, and they shall fall upon the sword, and shall not be wounded. And they shall run to and fro in the city, and shall run upon the walls, and climb upon the houses, and enter into the bedrooms like a thief. And the earth shall quake before them, and the heavens shall tremble, and the sun of the moon shall go dark. And the stars withdraw their shining. And Yah shall utter his voice before his army. Before his camp is very great, for he is strong and hath executed his word. For the day of Yah is great and very terrible. Who can abide it? Therefore also now, saith Yah, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting and with weeping and with mourning, and rent your heart and not your garments. And turn unto Yah your Elohim, for he is gracious and merciful and slow to anger and of great kindness. That's why it's taken 50 years plus. Plus, he is, and he's, he's given us chance after chance after chance. Slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth of him of, of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent? And leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto Yah your Elohim. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, call the children and those that suck the breast, and let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. And let the priests and the ministers of Yah weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Yah. And give not thine inheritance to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. You hear this. This is what he's telling you to do. That it's got to be a serious repentance, you guys. It's got to be a national thing where the stadiums are packed out and people are calling upon Yah. And 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 maybe we need to storm the, the state houses with prayer. And give not thine inheritance and heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore, they should say among the people, where is their God? Then will Yah be jealous for his land and pity his people. Will you hear what he's saying here? He says, then will Yah be jealous for his land and his people. Yea, Yah will answer and say to his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therein. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. That means he's not going to make us a, an example among the heathen, right? Good. <clears throat> He goes on to say, fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for Yah will do, will do great things. Be ye, be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth the, her fruit, and the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in Yah, your Elohim, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And this is this is a, a, a deep teaching right here because uh, the former rain and the latter rain is uh, what we're told is going to happen uh, prophetically. The, the pouring out of his spirit, as mentioned by the prophet, that's going to happen in the last days. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, right? That's the latter rain. The former rain is when he poured out his spirit 
in in the time right after Yeshua ascended, and the Holy Spirit was given to us, right? And this is why we have uh, Yom uh, um, Shavuot, which is the day that law was given. I will restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of your Elohim, your God. He hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Or the church, if you want to call it that, because you are part of Israel, but the church is going to get threshed. He didn't give his life for nothing. Even if it, even if the ministers, the pastors, the prophets got it wrong, he didn't. He didn't do it for nothing. He gave his life so that everybody could live. We got to be willing to go through the process. We got to be willing to take our medicine. We got to be willing to get humble and get on our faces and storm st state houses and say, no, we don't want. Look, look here in Florida, great example. And I like that I live here because they banned abortion. You want to know where judgment's going to come? Here's a good, uh, helpful tip. When you ask me where to go, where to go, research where. The states that have banned abortion. That's where you want to go. You don't want to be in a state where they are doing that. Because that's where the judgment's coming. And to the churches. And to the prophets. <laughs> and to the leaders. And the ones who hide in, in caves. Right? The people are valuable. He died for you. But there is a threshing. Because we we are his we we are the wheat, okay. And there's a whole demographic of people who believe one of the most. <clears throat> I don't even want to get into that, but you know the pre-trib rapture people are come are in for a rude awakening, and 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 they're gonna have to get it together really quick. Because this comes on this comes on like a thief in the night, right? caught off guard for some people but the wise will see it says in the, it, it says in the prophet the wise will see and instruct many so it does appear as if um we have another table that, that could go in the confirmation box or what what looks like is about to happen you guys and uh and, you know, I will say this again, if by chance Yah allows Donald Trump in there, and I think it's a small chance, it is a, a stay of execution, okay? That is what it is. It's not that judgment is going to go away. So you got these preachers out there that are, and, and, and it's mostly the prophets of these places are misleading the people. You know, the, the, the high probability that Yas is still going to do this thing and allow her in there is, has a lot of responsibility on those guys. And I'm just being honest, you, you guys. Where the prophets fail you, we're in trouble. When they got it wrong, we are in trouble. And that's the way it was in ancient times, too. And that's why Yah had to go to Amos to go give the people a word, because the prophets had failed. You ever wonder why Yah went to... Go read Amos and look at it. What the Amos has this conversation with, with the creator. Why are you calling on me? I'm a farmer. And the problem was all the prophets were corrupt and had fallen. And it's the same thing. It's the same thing happening now. So that's the first line of defense. We're, we're you know, and they're, <laughs> they're using all these keywords now that I find interesting, like, Flip-flop and reset and um, great shaking coming. And Yah showed me that he's going to turn his word. All the all these words are going to be turned right back on these prophets. 
So, you know, it's kind of stressful to bring this message. And I don't like to do it. You know, I was just talking to my mom today and I could hear it in her voice that, you know, she's, she's not stupid and she sees what's going on and she, she can feel it. She just wished I was a little more optimistic and had better news. Uh, but she, it's it's like, you know, like I said before, watching a, a train wreck and, you know, you kind of cringe and it's, um, it's unbearable to watch. Um, almost. Anyway, how do you stop it? I think the prophet just showed us here. He said, if you humble yourself, right? Rent your heart, not your garments. He's faithful to forgive, guys, but uh, it's uh, it's going to take some work from from people. We can't ride the fence. We can't just let the other guy do it. All right, and I wish there was some leaders that would emerge. I wish I could, but uh, you know, case being, you know, <laughs> my reputation is not on par, right? So I've been attacked, and my credibility has been ruined. So. Um, I wish I could. Somebody else is going to have to take up that that role, right? Maybe some of these pastors and mega church leaders need to get off their butt and do something, right? And I think y'all's got some. I'm holding my tongue. <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody because some of these preachers have been around for 50 years or more, and they're they're flying around in jet planes and, uh, you know. They're so arrogant in the pulpit. And these are the guys that Yah's coming back to deal with first. When Yeshua comes back, he's dealing with them first. And I don't want to be nowhere near that, right? <laughs> or part of that organization or that group. Yeah, we're in bad shape. But here's the good news. You know, there's no greater time to, to exist because we know that Yeshua is coming very soon. All right. And so we hold on to that. So if all these things are true, then so is that. His whole word is true. And I believe it when he says he's going to come save us out of it. That he tells that. Gives us a benchmark in time, which is a, a time called Jacob's trouble like no other. Right. It's a time like no other. <clears throat> So things get bad, but he's going to save us out of it. And, um, you know, I was, I've been telling a lot of people this here recently that, that there's a, there's an interesting fact that there are people that exist today that will never die. They will walk into eternity and never see death because we are that close to the return of Yeshua. <laughs> and that's an amazing thought, right? And blessed are they. That endure till the end. So, um, thank you guys for watching. I'm just rambling now. I, I want to encourage you. Um, be prayerful. Um, listen to, you know, some positive music. Praise music. Meditate on good things. Pray for this nation. Look for a where. To, look, look for a place to be useful to Yah. Ask him to use you in some way. And um yeah. Keep praying for this nation and this world. Uh, because there yeah, there's a shaking coming. Okay, all right. But it's not shaking Washington. It's gonna shake this nation. That's why we need to pray. So uh, when I got some other ones worked, I'll bring them to you, you guys. I haven't had anything significant come up on Donald Trump. Nothing. And uh, tons of this stuff here. Yeah. I haven't even shown you. Maybe we did. I think we did talk about um, artificial intelligence when I was still in Hawaii. Uh, but I've worked more on that. But also found some Neuralink stuff. George Soros stuff um what else we got nibiru stuff cern a few other few other subjects 
that are pretty interesting uh, still to look at. And I'm still buried in work to do, uh, you guys. And I don't get, you know, like I said, I don't get 10 hours to do this a day anymore. A couple at most. And um, in, in emails, that alone takes me about three hours a day. And I, that's how I usually start my day is, is going through emails and trying to knock them off because I get, they come every day. <clears throat> and so they start compiling. And if you let it go too long, uh, it gets out of hand. And so, um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, in the economy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, not going to get into it. Thank you, Father, for what you are doing in my life. No matter how hard it is, Father. Your word says, if I make my bed in hell, you are there with me and I trust you, Father, even if I'm in the fire. I, I know you're there. Thank you guys for watching the video. Thank you for supporting this channel. And if you would like to, I'll leave a link down below. Uh, I still got to get through the next couple of months. Uh, I got to go through court hearing, two court hearings in Hawaii, in October. So I got that to look forward to. So we'll talk about that more later. Thank you for watching the video. Shalom to you. May God bless you. We'll see you in the next video.